Hi and welcome to today's vlog. Today I am talking about my latest and newest migraine treatment. It is called, whatever this says, Eptinizumab uh, and the sort of generic brand name that it is called is this Vep, Vepti, Vep, Vepti, I don't know, nobody said the actual name to me I think because nobody can say it. Anyway, today I am going to talk about my treatment and what you can expect if you have to have this treatment as well. She likes oversharing with outfits and swearing, admiring her tats while she plays with all her cats. Her disability gives her superpower, agility to holiday and live the right way. Estella Soros. So if you, uh, follow my vlog regularly you will know that I recently was treated with Emgality which is another migraine drug. Uh, it didn't work, they stopped it because it didn't work so there was no point having the treatment. Uh, it's very expensive so if they can if they can get you off it they will. So that was not really that long ago I was told that that treatment was gonna stop and I was told again you're gonna have to wait for a new treatment to come along. Uh, so I settled myself in for an 18 month wait really because that's what it was last time. As it was this brand new treatment this eptinizumab <laughs> was approved by NICE so that they could start using it from the beginning of March. So I got a call less than a week ago to tell me that I had an appointment uh, for this new treatment and it was all ready to go and was I good to go so obviously you know I was gonna try it uh, so yeah sort of this all happened really quickly I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what this medication is supposed to do and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how they administered it I had to go into a hospital environment to have this treatment administered I obviously didn't film that procedure you know because patient confidentiality, privacy reasons, uh, that kind of thing. So I will talk you through it best I can. And I do have a very small video of what the room setup looked like, but obviously I didn't film the actual procedure because, you know, patient confidentiality and clinical settings and all that kind of business. So, uh, Tinazumab, that is such a mouthful, call these things easier things, is supposed to prevent migraine in adults who have migraines at least four days per month so that was me I have far more than four uh, so when I arrived I was given this booklet which is all about the medication now this week is the first sort of rounds of official treatment that they're doing of this so it's all very new to the nurses bless them they were they were really good I had a fine experience it was fine I personally am used to having needles and medications and invasive procedures not that this was an invasive well it's classed as an invasive procedure but you know I'm used to this kind of thing so this sort of doesn't phase me that much I get that if you aren't used to hospital treatments this might freak you out a little bit so hopefully I can put your mind at ease he a vepti vepti I don't know, is a medicine that is going to prevent migraines. So the idea is it's going to stop them before you even have them. It's given every 12 weeks, so you'll have this treatment around four times a year. Uh, it's given by a healthcare professional. It has to be given in a hospital setting, so either at like a dedicated infusion centre or in an outpatient setting. The recommended dose is 100 milligrams every 12 weeks, which is what I have just had the first dose of, 100 milligrams, and it was given over half an hour. Uh, and it's a drip infusion, which goes directly into your veins. So they pop a cannula in the back of your hand or wherever they can find a good vein, uh, which is not easy on me. They did, my appointment took a lot longer because they really struggled to find a vein, which is... A problem I am very used to that's just me I don't have great veins and so they did struggle to find a vein but they eventually got one and it was all set up and it was fine and then once the cannula is in they set all the drip up 
and it goes into your bloodstream over a 30 minute infusion. So basically you just sit in a chair, cannula in your hand for 30 minutes whilst the infusion runs through. Once it's run through, you're free to go. Basically they take the cannula out, they pop a little, um, you know, like a bit of gauze and some micropore over the back of where the cannula site was, which you apply some pressure for a little while and then you can remove that plaster after about an hour and then you can absolutely go about your day as you normally would there are no restrictions after you've taken this medication you can go back to work you can drive you can pick your kids up you can make decisions so this medication isn't going to affect sort of any of that which is really good yeah i like the idea that you can just go and have it and then continue about your day so that's really good so it says here a brief look at the science uh, so it says inside your body there is a protein called calcitonin gene related peptide or CGRPs and they are thought to play a large role in what causes migraines. So people with migraine have been found to have higher than normal levels of CGRP, that's me. It says this drug binds to those CGRPs preventing them from activating the receptors which in turn help to reduce the risk of migraines. So these this medication is supposed to stop a migraine before they even start so the idea is this will completely reduce your migraine days because this medication will stop them happening i guess uh i was told it can cause side effects most the most common side effect that has been reported is sort of cold flu-like symptoms so snotty nose fatigue a uh, bit of a sore throat that kind of thing i personally I didn't really, I can't say I experienced any of those side effects. We went out for dinner yesterday evening and my temperature felt a bit weird, but I can't control my own body temperature anyway. So that necess wasn't necessarily related to the medications. I can't say for sure either way, but I certainly don't have a particularly stuffy nose or a sore throat. I'm fatigued today, but I am permanently fatigued. So again, I can't specifically say if that's a side effect or not there is obviously a risk of allergic an immediate severe allergic reaction um those are things like your pulse will uh, get a lot faster or get a lot slower i guess uh, breathing difficulties uh, sudden changes in blood pressure dizziness uh, severe skin itching rashes and swelling face and tongue so those are sort of the severe very unlikely allergic reactions to have and if you were going to have a reaction to it you would have that reaction immediately so it's not something that you need to go away and worry about this is why they do this drug in sort of a medical setting so they can catch those allergic reactions if and when they happen uh, because they do happen immediately as the drug is administered so it's not something you need to worry about once you've had it and once you've gone home you're not going to get that severe allergic reaction but you may get the side effects i talked about earlier so that was basically it in sort of terms of the medication and the side effects and things so when i arrived for my appointment yesterday i arrived to their dedicated infusion center which in my case is like an abandoned gp surgery that they just use the space for healthcare professionals now uh it was a bit it was a bit weird there was no sort of receptionist there wasn't really sure where to go which is sort of nobody's fault really it was just one of those things so i was called through fairly quickly and sat in a chair the room set up looked a bit like this. There are some chairs in there. They're like recliner chairs so they can recline them if they need to. There's blood pressure equipment there so they can check that if they need to. There is recess equipment on site because it is a medical setting. Obviously, there's always going to be recess equipment on site. It's unlikely it's going to be used, but it's there. And then all the drugs, paraphernalia, the equipment, the drip stand, the pump that they put the infusion through, everything's all there in the room set up and ready for you to go. So I sat in the chair. They asked me a couple of questions, you know, you pregnant, any history of heart disease, that kind of thing. So they ask you those questions. You answer them as is appropriate for you. Uh, and then... There was a consent form which I'd signed, so I gave my consent for the medication to happen. They then went ahead and tried to find my veins. Once they'd found my veins, they took some blood. Uh, so going forward, my blood will be tested again before my next treatment, and that's just to check that from this 
blood test I've just had that no levels have changed or there's nothing untoward going on. Uh, so it's, it's sort of pretty routine stuff and I will be called for a blood test before I have my next treatment. Anyway, once they've taken the bloods, they flush the cannula through with normal saline and then the, effu the infusion was set up and off we went. I sat there for 30 minutes, the infusion went through, they checked in with me periodically that I was feeling okay, that it wasn't hurting, that the cannula hadn't blown, anything like that. Uh, they sort of kept an eye on me as I was sat there. They were, you know, very reassuring. And yeah, 30 minutes really isn't that isn't too long of a time. I would recommend, you know, maybe take a book with you, take a magazine, take a game to play on your phone just to pass the time if you need to. As it was, I chatted with the nurses, I guess, if they were doing more than one infusion at a time and they were a little busier and sort of there was no one to talk to, it would have been nice to read a book. I did take a book with me, I just didn't read it because I was chatting with the nurses basically. So yeah, once the infusion had run through, they flushed the cannula again, again with normal saline. The cannula is then removed, and like I said, they pop just some gauze on the backs of your hands, which you need to leave there for about an hour until the bleeding's completely stopped, if there is any bleeding. When they remove, when you have a cannula removed, there sometimes is a little bit of blood, but no more than if you've ever had a blood test or given blood. Uh, and then I was free to go, so off I went, and that was it really. I have to keep a headache diary now. In order to get my next treatment, they have to see a reduction in my migraines. This is sort of a very expensive treatment and they really don't want to give it to you if they don't have to. Which, I don't know, I think that's a shame. I guess, is it going to work just after one treatment? I, I personally don't know that it is. I think you should be entitled to more than one treatment before they write you off completely. But that's the way the NHS works. So yeah, I have to fill in a headache diary. I filled them up before. I filled them up for every migraine treatment I've had so far. And you just send them off once a month. And then they keep a record of those diaries. They check to see the reduction, if there is a reduction in your migraines. So about a month before my next treatment will be due, I've got a call booked with the nurses. And they'll ask me how I am, if I've noticed a reduction. And then, if appropriate, they'll book my blood test and rebook me in for my next infusion. They did also tell me that a lot of people have gone in to their infusion with a headache and as the infusion has run that headache has dissipated. I I can't say for sure. I went in with a headache. I still had a bit of a headache when I left. That headache did get worse as the day went on. My headaches are quite often affected by the weather and yesterday here in the southwest it was quite a close day so I think the weather maybe didn't help my headache and I think the stress of the day the stress of a new treatment all that kind of thing sort of compounded so I can't necessarily say that it cured or caused a headache yesterday I don't know I will say that I don't particularly have a headache today which is nice uh, and I guess we'll see how we go on over the next month or so and see how the treatment's going on. So I will update you as this treatment develops. It's sort of too soon to tell, really. I, you know, one day after, I guess, isn't the greatest judge of whether this treatment has worked. But I wanted to come on and tell you about it because it is a fairly new treatment and it sounds like a lot of people are going to get the opportunity to try this. So I think it's useful just to have this little video. Maybe if you're going to have this treatment, just to let you know what's going to happen and what you can expect. Fingers crossed it works, I guess. We will see. So that is it from me for today. If you've got any questions about this treatment or any questions about migraines and their treatments in general, drop them below. I will try to answer them as best I can. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be back soon with another video.